Hello and welcome to this video on exact trigonometric values. Now suppose you were to put on your calculator sine of say an angle of 30 degrees and you press equals, we get a very nice value, we get 0.5. But if we tried say sine of 47 and pressed equals, we get 0.73135. So it seems that sine, cos and tan of certain angles give you nice values. And in this video we're going to look at those nice values that we get. And the key to this topic is just taking a square of side one and splitting it in half diagonally. So we're going to have a square there of side one. That's obviously a right angle. What would these two angles be? Well, this is an isosceles triangle. So these two angles have to be the same, 180 minus the 90, and then divide that by two, we get 45 for each of those angles, 45 degrees. And what about this length here? What is that? Well, we can use Pythagoras. If we call this value x, then we've got, well, 1 squared plus 1 squared is equal to that value squared, x squared. Well, 1 plus 1 is 2, x squared is 2, so therefore x is the square root of 2. So this length here is the square root of 2. Now using this diagram, we can then find out what sine of 45 is, what cos of 45 degrees is, and what tan of 45 degrees is. So if you remember from the previous videos, we could use SOCATOA to work these things out. So remember that sine of the angle is the opposite over the hypotenuse, cos of the angle is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, and tan of the angle is the opposite over the adjacent. So if you want to find sine of 45, well that's opposite over hypotenuse. Well, this is the angle here. That side is opposite the angle. We saw how to do this in the previous video. That side is adjacent to that angle, so we label with A, and that is a hypotenuse, so we label with H. So sine of 45 is going to be opposite over hypotenuse, 1 over root 2. And we get this. What about cos of 45? Well, that is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, which is 1 over root 2. So we get 1 over root 2 again. And what about tan of 45? That's opposite over adjacent. Opposite, which is 1, over adjacent, which is 1. It's 1 over 1, which is just 1. And let's just check that on our calculator. If I do tan of 45 degrees, it gives you 1. So these are some exact trigonometric values. We have a nice value here when we do sine of 45 or cos of 45 or tan of 45 because we can express it in an exact way without, without infinitely many digits. Now, how do we get sine of 30 or sine of 60, the other kind of common angles? Well, what we do is we start with an equilateral triangle of side two, we split it in half like this. So I'm gonna have a triangle like this. I said the whole equilateral triangle was side length two, so that's two. Well, if that's two, that's gonna be half the side, which is one. And then we can use Pythagoras again to get this remaining length. This is a right angle here. So if I call that x again, well, we've got one squared plus x squared here is equal to two squared. So that means that x squared is equal to 2 squared minus 1 squared, which is 3. And that gives you x is the square root of 3. So this length here, using Pythagoras' theorem, is root 3. And what about the angles? Well, each interior angle of an equilateral triangle is 60 degrees. So that's 60 degrees, and that's 90. So the remaining angle must be 30, so that they add up to 180 degrees. So we can use these to now get sine of 60, cos of 60, sine of 30, cos of 30, etc. So let's write these. Well, sine of 30, that's going to be opposite over hypotenuse. Well, we're using the 30 here, so that's going to be the opposite. And that's going to be the adjacent, and that's going to be the hypotenuse. So opposite over hypotenuse is 1 over 2. What about cos of 30? That's adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent over hypotenuse is root 3 over 2. And again, you can just put these on your calculator to check. Cos of 30 indeed is root 3 over 2. And tan of 30, that's opposite over adjacent, so 1 over root 3. Now, to get sine of 60, we have to relabel the sides because if this is the angle we're interested in, 60, that's now the opposite. So I'm going to change that for an O and that I'm going to turn into an A because that's now adjacent to the angle of 60. So sine of 60 is opposite over hypotenuse, that's root 3 over 2. Cos of 60 is adjacent over hypotenuse, which is 1 over 2. And tan of 60 is equal to opposite of adjacent, that's root 3 over 1, which is just root 3. 
and that gives us our remaining exact trigonometric values. Now you could always memorize these if you can, but the key to working out these values is just to draw a square of side length, we could say a unit square, and cut it diagonally half for 45 degrees, and we take an equilateral triangle of side length 2 and cut that in half to work out the exact trig values for either 30 degrees or 60 degrees. Now this allows us to work out all sorts of trigonometric problems without using a calculator. So this calculator is now gone. So question one, they might want you to show one of these particular values. So we can do exactly what we did before. 60 degrees, that's going to involve an equilateral triangle. So if I take an equilateral triangle and I divide it into two, and let's make the side length two. It doesn't matter what we make the side length as long as we're consistent with the other sides. Well, this side would then be one. We saw earlier by Pythagoras theorem that length was root three. And if it was an exam, you would want to show your working how you got that root three using this same working that we had here. And then, well, we're involving 60 degrees, so let's put the 60 degrees in. There's no point in putting the 30 degrees in because we're not using it. And we want to find sine of 60, so that's going to involve the opposite and the hypotenuse. That's the opposite, that's the hypotenuse. And then you can just write sine of 60 is root 3 over 2. And to be honest, most of your working here is the diagram itself. The diagram is indicating most of your working. But you may want to show how you got that root 3, as we did before. What about the second one? One solution of 5 cos x equals k is x equals 60. Well, why don't we put that 60 degrees in there? So we've got 5 cos 60 degrees is equal to k. And we've got to find the value of k. Well, we know what cos of 60 is. We know that cos of 60 is equal to half. So we can say 5 times half is equal to k and 5 times half is 5 halves. So you could always do the 5 over 1, and you can see you've got 5 times 1 at the top, which is 5, 1 times 2 at the bottom, which is 2, it's 5 over 2. So k is 5 over 2. What about question 3? Determine the area of this triangle. So if I copy it out again. Well, how do we find the area of a triangle? Well, the easiest way is to use half times base times height. So we've got the height of the triangle, but we need this base here, don't we? Let's label the sides. This is opposite to that side, and we quite like to work out this length here. Let's call it x, and that's the opposite to that angle, and then this is adjacent to that angle, so that is a. So it's O and A, that's tan, isn't it? If we look at this, toa. So we write tan of the angle is equal to the opposite, which is x, over the adjacent, which is 6 root 3. And that means if we times both sides by 6 root 3, we've got x is equal to 6 root 3 times tan 30. Now, what is tan 30? Tan of 30, what we worked out earlier, was 1 over root 3. So x is 6 root 3 times 1 over root 3. Now, if we put that over 1, we then get 6 root 3 over root 3. The root 3s cancel, so we're just left with 6. So that base is 6. And then we can easily get the area, because the area is equal to half times the base, which is 6, times the height, which is 6 root 3. Now, half times 6 is 3, and then we've got 3 times 6 root 3. Well, we can do the 3 times the 6, which is 18, and then we've got the root 3. Remember, when we times thirds together, we times the non-thirds together first. So we've got 3 times 6, they're non-thirds, that becomes 18. And then we times the thirds together. And the only third we've got here is root 3. So it's just 18 root 3. And what about this last problem here? We've got to determine the exact value of x, giving it in this form here. So I'm going to copy out the diagram so we can draw on it. Now, we've seen a diagram like this before in a previous video, and what we notice is basically we've got two triangles here. We've got this triangle here, this right angle triangle, and we've got this right angle triangle. And you can see that they share that length there, which means it would be sensible to try and work out this length first. So we can use this big triangle first because, look, we've got that side and we've got an angle. So let's use the whole triangle first. Let's call this side um, H, doesn't really matter, H for height, say. So using that triangle, we've got this is opposite to that angle 45, and this length here, the 6 root 2, is the hypotenuse. So it's going to be sine, isn't it? We've got O and H. 
So sine of 45 degrees is equal to the opposite, which we called h, over the hypotenuse, which is 6 root 2. So if we times both sides by 6 root 2, h is equal to 6 root 2 multiplied by sine 45. But sine of 45, we worked out, was 1 over root 2. So it's 6 root 2 times 1 over root 2. We could write that over 1 so we can multiply these fractions together. We've got 6 root 2 at the top times 1 is 6 root 2. And we've got 1 times root 2 is root 2. Ah, so 6 lots of root 2. We divide by root 2. The root 2's cancel, leaving 6. So we therefore know that this length here, h, is equal to 6. So let's try and draw out that triangle now. This one here, we've got that 60 degree angle. We've got that length is 6. And we can try and find out that length, because if we knew that length, then it's possible to work out this length if we knew the whole thing. So we want to find this bottom length here. Let's call it y. We're involving the opposite here and the adjacent. So that's tan. Tan of 60 degrees is equal to the opposite 6 over the adjacent, which is y. And remember, we can use a swapsy trick. We can swap the thing we're dividing by and the results. So we've got y is equal to 6 over tan 60. Now, tan of 60 we found was root 3 early in the video. So that's 6 over root 3. And we could rationalize the denominator. So remember, we can times top and bottom this fraction by root 3. And that gives you 6 root 3 at the top over root 3 times root 3 is just 3. And then if we have 6 lots of root 3 and we divide by 3, we have 2 lots of root 3. So this length here is 2 root 3. So therefore, this is 2 root 3. Now, to get this length, we need this total length so that we can subtract the 2 root 3. But do you notice that this here is an isosceles triangle, because that's 45, and this angle is also 45. So this length here must be the same as that length there. You can see they're the same length. So if that's 6, this is also 6, which means that x is equal to the whole length here, 6 minus 2 root 3. Now, the question did ask for the answer in the form a minus root b, so we want a single square root here. And in a previous video on simplifying thirds, we saw like the reverse of simplifying thirds, where we could write this 2 as root 4, and we've got the root 3 here. And the reason why we do that is because we can then combine it into one third. Root 4 times root 3 is root 12. So we get 6 minus root 12, and that is the final answer.